lot of water in a, in a big area. Yeah, yeah and considering you don't think it's about, about putting your stuff up because of it, and that was where our bedroom was, his office, my sewing business, the only working shower, the laundry room, and every laundry room was a storage room, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And... And considering the floor of space is like 1,277 square feet, and uh, both both levels are. Yeah. yeah. And and you know it was really weird just to see water. The what, what happened so was. So was it coming into the window wells? At first, what happened was is uh, I went to go. We we keep the cat locked up. One of the cats locked up in my office because she tends to be naughty, and so I open up the door and I I mm, saw water office. next to the 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 litter box, I says, you mean to tell me you peed? <laughs> you know, that kind of response. I realized what happened. She doesn't look happy at all, obviously. So I scoop her up, and I get her upstairs, and I get him up. I says, we got water coming in the window. So he goes into the office, and he's trying to mop that up. And there was water coming in the bathroom window, but that was okay because it was right above the shower. Not going to worry about it. Went into the laundry room. Uh, there was some water coming in from under, you know, from that window, but it's just a cement floor. So, do you guys like have water that's coming like that, that was flooded in the yard and started coming down underneath there, or was it just so much rain that was just coming? It was really weird because it looked like it was, the ground was so saturated it was coming up this uh, way. Seeping. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And in the laundry room, I actually saw water. In the window, we have brand new windows, you know, and it was doing one of these things, and it was just a little tiny trickle coming through. Oh. So it was, I, I was real surprised to see that much water. Yeah. And so I, I got the kids up. I says, grab, grab a shovel, meet me on the side of the house, and I says, and I showed them what was going on on the side because I didn't know about the, the back yet. Yeah. I says, basically. You know, and 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 the problem was is on the side the the um, ground is pretty much level with the top of the window well, and so Michael built a mud thing around the window well to hope hope that it'll right. keep it from going in, and then they built a trench away from both windows and down the driveway to direct it away. And then they went out back and we tried to do the same thing. I got you know those ice cream buckets stuff like that. Mr. I save everything, <laughs> and a bunch of them, so I grabbed that, tied yarn onto it, and I dropped it into the backyard well, and I would take a stick and poke it into the water, which it would completely submerge in there, and I just, buckets, yeah. you know, so I'm bailing buckets of water out of the windows while they're doing that, and um, went to open the garage door, couldn't. And it didn't take me, it took me a while to understand what had happened, that the ground had soaked up so much water, the cement was rising. And so the it had risen, so I couldn't get the garage door open. And on the, on the patio, now we knew we had a little bit of a crack on the patio. Well, what had happened is it cracked this way, or more like this way. But anyway, this part was flowing towards the house. And so all the rain that was catching it, and it was just going right, in, and that's what was feeding into the window well. And then of course this one's off to the grass, and it's just puddles. And we're digging trenches out to the street over there. <laughs> and poor Gabby, you know how we have a fence issue, okay? Gabby was digging trenches, and she saw that the water was going this way, so she was continued digging, not realizing that those holes from the cement things are still there. And she fell in them and ended up in water up to here. Wow. And then that's, uh, oh, and of course, you know, we're just trying to bail out. You know, we're, I went downstairs for something and noticed a bunch of water coming out from the, the um, well, laundry I'm room. I open up the door. You've ever seen those movies of New York being flooded and you see the sewage yeah. stuff coming up from the sewage. That's what was going on. I was like, we got a water fountain going on in the middle of our living our, our, and it's everything's coming out of the sewer in yeah. the bathroom and the laundry room. And I'm like, help! <laughs> you know, so uh, at first, you know, I'm trying to mop it back in there and Michael's making uh, sandbags 
to block it off. Yeah. And it's kept seeping underneath the, the well, walls. Well, this is a 500 year. Yeah. There's, yeah and, 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 you know, so obviously, do you, I mean, do you guys have flood? Do you guys have flood insurance? Well, I saw on the news last night where FEMA, you can apply and there sh you should be able to get, I think, instead of like $31,000 and, and, and so forth to be able to help. Oh, okay. uh, So I saw that on the news last night. Yeah, um, you know, we yeah, somebody, yeah, there's somebody yesterday said FEMA.org. Yeah, you have to register, uh -huh. um, but you might want to take advantage of that. Yeah. So yeah, because when we went out to the base yesterday, FEMA, uh, they, uh, there was staging they're doing a, having a staging place for the FEMA people out on the base, but they're the ones that are, if the hospitals need it, you know, things like that, those are the ones that they are dealing with, and that's what she found out and got the, that I, the FEMA.org yeah. website. Yeah, most people, I think I heard on the news last night, I mean, they were saying that most people in Colorado don't have flood insurance. Yeah. I mean, you just don't think it. Now, the people obviously who live close to the the big Thompson, and they were required, I, I thought they were required to have flood insurance, but maybe not. So they were saying that, you know, the number of thousands of homes that were destroyed, less than I think 500 actually had uh, flood insurance. Mm -hmm. of the 20-something, 22,000 homes mm -hmm. destroyed uh, or damaged, less than I think 500 had flood insurance. Yeah. So it's, it's a very minute number. So... Well, if you think of it from your guys' perspective, you really don't, you're not in a location where you would expect to be flooded. Yeah, I've been so here all my life. I've never had yeah. this problem. You know, yeah. granted, the, gra the garage every now and then would get a little bit of water in there. Yeah. And that was crazy because when I finally did get the door open, there was about this much water in there. And you see those pictures where there's always water coming out the door? Yeah. That's what happened. It was like, it was all flowing out the door. Yeah, yeah, and so I just left the door open so it could get out. But the the, the problem was with the garage was um, some time back we thought we were going to lose the house. So we, you know, packed up everything. We took it to a storage place, realized we're spending an awful lot of money for storage. So we took it out of storage, put it in the garage for safekeeping. And then I was slowly going through the stuff and bringing it back into the house when we had Dave and Annie move in. And they had their little business and they basically rearranged and everything and they shoved all their crap into our garage. So I couldn't even get to yeah. our stuff. And, and we still, even though they've moved out a year ago, uh, like I've been telling everybody, we didn't have a square foot on the property that wasn't their crap. And we, you know, by truckloads getting rid of stuff, and we haven't quite got it all out, but it's a whole right. lot better. And I at least got a path in the garage. And so we're still working on it. And so now everything in there on the floor is wet. And so all our belongings as well is in there. And I'm just hoping that... Is it really con Did you have drywall? Or was it just all concrete? Like on the uh, the walls. I, mean, oh, I know you have a concrete behind if you had drywall in front, but did you have drywall in your basement? Uh, yeah, we got. So yeah. up to like that much of the drywall is pretty much. Placed. And then some, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, you know, like I was telling the contractor, I hate the floor plan down there anyway. And I've been wanting to gut out the basement. I've been wanting to clean out the basement. You know, it's just like one of those, you know, how clutter just irritates yeah. you. And it's one of those, I clean out an area, and for some reason there's more crap there that right. I didn't put there. And I'm like, can I please clean a spot and have it stay clean? And it just doesn't happen in my house. Everybody works against me type of thing. And so it had to take the act of God to get what I wanted <laughs> to clean out the basement. So everything's and out of the basement now? Pretty much. And then we, you know, I plan to just tear out all the walls anyway. You know, but we have to. There's just no well, way around yeah, it. Yeah, because of mold. Yeah, yeah and, and it's sewer water. It's not just water. Yeah. It's sewer water. Yeah. If it was just coming through the windows, you know, take out this portion, replace it, won't be a big deal. But it was sewer water. It was throughout the basement. Yeah. And um, when I finally got to my closet Sunday, uh, my long dresses, of course, had were, was long enough to be in the water and absorbed, and so a good chunk of my closet had to go. And, you know, my sister and my mom were like, well, just wash it with bleach and be a lot like, you don't understand. <laughs> it's sewer water. It's not 
rainwater, it's sewer water. We cannot keep this. There's just no way of doing this. And it broke my heart because I had a plaque that my dad made when he was a kid. A uh, sewing box that was my grandmother's, an angel that my mom, it was, it was basically a rag doll angel. And, you know, just made out of scrap, fa scrap fabric. Just those kind of things going is the part that hurt. Yeah. And I just finally got, you know, and everybody's like, well, what about this? What about this? I said, just don't show it to me. If it's wet, just get it out. That's all, that's the rule. If it's wet, it goes that way. If it's dry, it goes that way. That's it. I don't even want to look at it. I don't want to see what it is. Right. Because it's that upsetting. You know, and um, we had from the street up to our uh, the house pile about four feet deep of stuff that had to go, and then we had started making a pile in the backyard because there was no place in the front to put it. You know, and that was all stuff that had to go. And of course, you got these people who drive by. I'll take your trash away for you know, guy with a pickup. I'll take your trash away for $130 a load. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, finally, somebody came by with a dump truck. You know, granted, our company, you know, our trash company would probably take it away for fifteen dollars. That's usually their fee. It says like if we have to do a special pickup, it's fifteen dollars. You know, but these guys came by and says for forty bucks we'll take the whole business. I was like, with my blessings, I don't care. Get rid of it. And so now we're working on another big batch then out we'll in the yard. Then we'll see if I. How much our trash company will pick up? Yeah, and then it's there without notification. Yeah, and then there's um, like I said, we still got the garage, so we're gonna. But it's about halfway up to the house with the second load, and then we have um, you know all our belongings are on the car park. Our bedroom is in the living room, and when Michael and John try to get the mattress out of the basement. It got dragged across the stairway, which is soaked with the water from downstairs. So now we need to get a new mattress. But uh, it's just a spot, so I've been trying to dry it out and clean it and keep that on the bottom. And then we got a, another uh, air mattress on top of that, so at least we got a comfortable bed. So you get all the water out. Yeah. All the water's out. The water is out. Of course, you've got to hand scrub everything clean right. because of, you know, stuff, and I figured I'd probably, that the tile down there, it's so old and so yucky, parts of it, you step on it and it pops and just explodes yeah. on, under your feet, so I'm going to have to, I'm thinking of taking a hammer and just get out what I can of it, right. and just put a whole new flooring down, and, uh, well, obviously, what, you know, what transpired last week, and then in the after, aftermath that follows ensued, obviously, you know, weight is not a priority um, at that point in time. So we <laughs> scales <understand>. toast. <laughs> yeah, so fully understand. Yeah. You know that that yeah, that takes kind of secondary <laughs> secondary nature to that. There's other things to have to worry about at this point in time. I think to make sure that your mental health is is okay, and that's why I brought up FEMA and, and, and making sure that you can get some things in place and in order. That way, you know this because right now it's a major loss. So yeah. it's trying to look at resources that are available that can help you through this, right? Because these are life-altering events, yeah. right? <laughs> life-altering events are what, what get in the way of long-term success or even revert back, right? And it's not because of purposeful, you know, behaviors. It's just life takes a turn that wasn't expected, and you get out of the routine of what you were doing, right? And so that's why I was bringing up... FEMA and looking at other resources that you can to help resolve these things so that way it, it, it lowers the stress level, right? And lower the stress level so that way you feel more at ease, feel more at peace, knowing that there's something going to be there to help you through this. And that way you, you, you can have a little bit of ability to start focusing back on you. Yeah. I mean, that's the intent is, is to really look for resources that can, help, that can help you through this ordeal. Yeah, I haven't even, I think I've made three meals the whole week yeah. for myself and you know and granted it was stuff I should have right but uh, basically it's it's you know I get up I work my tail off until somebody says food well you're not the only uh, patient <laughs> I've got a handful of patients that, that, that experience and I've got one patient that lives in Estes and they pretty much their whole you know they, their business was pretty much flooded out yeah um, and so they're they're pretty much done uh, until they can Obviously, it's going to take two weeks to clean it up, and then pretty much 
pretty much us is shut down. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, and then Zach put me on that. I can tell you about that. For what? I ended up. I guess so you had an infection, so this is an antibiotic? Yeah. And I have to make sure I have food with that. Absolutely. Each, every time, because he, he said it caused up systemic and diarrhea, which both I have not had. Okay. Actually, uh, um, what I want you to do is you need to go to Vitamin Cottage or Natural Grocers. I'm going to write it down. I want you to take a, a probiotic with that. I got one at home. Well, is it, oh, is it a different one? Yeah, I want you to take Saccharomyces boulardii because um, diarrhea is, well, it's an antibiotic resistant yeast strain. Mm -hmm. So it's meant to keep the bacterial composition of your stomach calm it down so that way you don't get diarrhea, you don't get those things when you're oh. taking it. I mean, you can take a standard probiotic, and um, but if you do encounter saccharum, uh, uh, diarrhea, then I want you to also take Saccharomyces boulardii. So I'll write okay. that down for you. Okay. But, um, yeah, what happened, that was a really weird thing. I had, You know how you get a cut, but you can't see it, but you can feel it? Yeah. You know, just the tiniest of ever thing. I had one of those on my finger right there. And it, you know, I couldn't figure out what was going on, so I put some medicine on it, a Band-Aid on it, and, of course, put the gloves on and get back to work, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, my, my gloves spring a leak, and my hands got dirty and all that kind of good stuff. And slowly but surely, my hands started swelling. And up to here, you could still see just a tiny bit of red. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right there, but it, up to here. And it was that really, I don't know, like that color red up my arm. Did, where, where did you cut yourself? Right there. Now you can see a scar because it, it had bubbled into a great big pus thing, and I had to break it open to get the pus out. But it, I kid you not, it was swollen really like twice the size of my whole hand. Just and that was from the water? Yeah, it was, it was I had an open sore think of. and I was dealing with sewer water. Yeah, and I I had bandaged it. I had gloves on. Yeah. And and it was like there was no way around it type yeah. of thing. And and uh, that was Saturday. No, Friday night. Friday, Friday when that when, when when I I had ice packs on. I I tried a hot pack, but it made it worse. So I put back on the ice packs, and I slept with an ice pack on. He was wondering if I should go to the emergency room that night. And my concern was is Michael and Gabby were gone and we had their dog and I didn't want to leave their dog alone. Right. And so uh, I told him, if I feel like I need to go to the emergency room, I'll let you know. But otherwise, I think first thing in the, doc in the morning will be the best thing to do. So sure enough, next morning I call the doctor and by that time it's up to here, but where before it was down here. And uh, went to the doctor and told him and he's like, I tell you to do this and that and the other, but you're kind of in a situation where you can't, you know, right. like the diet thing, you know, we got to do, we have you gotta to do You got to do what you got to do, yeah. Yeah. So he gave me that and, um, you know, do the best you can to keep it clean, you know, that kind of thing. And so it took about a couple of days before the swelling went down and the color was somewhat normal, yeah. but you could still see a bit of red type of thing. So that's what happened. It was just... You know, and I knew, the second I knew, I realized that I had water in there, I have known people to get gangrene real fast from an open, and it was just a tiny cut right. in well, the water. So how much, you know, so where are you at on the, on the clean-out phase? Uh, all the wet stuff is out, right? I think so. All the wet stuff is out, and so now it's just scouring down everything and breaking out walls and that kind of thing. Okay. So, and uh, I told, you know, he's like, can we bring stuff back in? No, 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 don't bring, <laughs> let me get this space, you know, as I get space cleaned out, you know, like I'll spend a day cleaning out the space and then we'll put stuff in that clean space, you yeah. know, and just go that way. And granted, we got like my filing cabinet's got to come out still, uh, his, his furniture, whatever furniture that's made of wood, it's got to go, you know, that kind of thing. So we're going to be taking that stuff out eventually. Yeah, but I got to empty, empty the things out. That's yeah, it's not an immediate emergency thing right now. So. Okay. 
right. so that's well, one day at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's a big thing. I think again, going back to those resources, start to you know investigate. I think you can go to ninenews.com. Uh, they'll probably have some links mm -hmm. uh, for flood victims to click on and start that process. Okay. Uh, I think that's the main thing. Is just get the process started yeah. uh, more than anything. Okay. Um, that way, maybe it will help lower some anxiety. That at least you, you're doing some. You know, hopefully the, the you've got some opportunities that come in and can provide some assistance. That would uh, be great. So. Yeah, I, I figured. You know, that I wasn't going to file for the fence thing. I think I will now. <laughs> just you know, to help with the money, because I've already spent a couple hundred dollars at least on stuff just trying to, to deal with, you know, because we had to buy a porta potty, we had to buy a, uh, we have a grill, but for some reason it wasn't working, so I had to go buy a portable grill, you know, so we can cook. Uh, we have, you know, the refrigerator, refrigerator and freezer will keep to a point, and then we got a cooler, so, you know, that was, so I was basically thinking camping, and store food, you know, and we bought a bunch of food that we doesn't really require right. refrigeration. And so basically because we we didn't have a bathroom, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. And once we finally could use the bathroom, the problem is, is the upstairs bathroom only has a toilet in it, literally. And that's because we were, were in the process of remodeling it. The only working shower is downstairs, and it's covered in... Yeah. <laughs> That's what she's been working and on for the last two days. all day yesterday scrubbing and scouring just the shower. And that's done. So now I'm working on cleaning yeah. out the rest of the bathroom. And then okay. I bought I bought all kinds of stuff to make the bathroom work better for all of us. Sure. You know, because it's been kind of a all thrown right. together type of thing. And so, and then the next room I'm going to work on is the laundry room so that we can do our laundry. You know, my sister was kind enough to do my laundry, our laundry, uh, okay. Sunday, and she. I told her, I said, you don't know how ha happy I am to have clean underwear. <laughs> so. Uh, well, do you, since your scale is broken, do you want to, you know, weigh in, or do you want to take a week off? Um, okay. I'm, I'm I betting I gained 10 pounds, but I probably should just to see where see. I am. Yeah. I, I'm just saying just to see. Uh, you may surprise yourself. I may surprise myself. Okay. Two fifty three point six. <laughs> Not quite. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> it was one of those like like I said, I, I haven't been cooking. I was it's just here's the soup and sandwich, thank well, you. Go work. <laughs> so the final thing too is um, mm -hmm. Any constipation? I mean, At I first, didn't, I, didn't I provide you that col uh, Colonex bottle? Did I do that? <laughs> that was another way. I took those pills Wednesday night. Yeah. Thursday morning, all hell breaks loose, right? Yeah. Those pills worked wondrous. Yeah, they work. Yeah, the problem was. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> right. So then you stopped taking them. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but to be honest, I did everything I could to basically create the, uh, the constipation issue. I didn't drink water. Well, I was careful what I ate. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Just because there was no place to go. We did buy a porta potty. We put yeah. it in the garage. Not super fan of using it. Yeah. That kind of thing. But, you know. When it is what you, you got to have something. You got to yeah. do something. You know, Michael yeah. was, Michael, <laughs> I was getting a kick out of Michael. He would grab a shovel and go behind the garage. <laughs> type of thing. And, um, so we were, it was kind of like that for, I don't know, two, three days. And then once I knew that the bathroom was usable and everything like that, then I s tried to get back out. I'm, and even taking my pills, it's like a whole, it's taking me two days to take one day's worth of pills. Right. You know, and it's, it's just trying to, and I was afraid to drink the water for fear of, so I was drinking diet soda or whatever yeah. it is you know it is what it is i mean it's not a bad thing it's not a good thing it's just what is the outcome of what's transpired over the past week so right. you know i think from that standpoint you can't i mean <laughs> what are you gonna do what are you gonna do right yeah. and so it, it's not you know there's a lot of environmental things that are outside your control that you're a product of that environment for that for that time being so it's yeah. just 
you know, I think the main thing is that I want you to focus on is to lower the stress level and investigate sources to help you through this. Right. That is my single most important thing to, to strike home yeah. this week. And as you go through that process, your stress level will come down, your anxiety will level will come down, and that way you can feel some sense of normalcy by focusing back on you, even in this non-normal environment. Right. right. And I think that's the main thing that I want you to focus on uh, more so than anything else. Yeah, I'll put one thing. She her stress level Sunday was a uh, prime example when Val, you know, when Val and John came over and helped and then offered to let us come over there to, you know, use the, they have a jacuzzi type tub right. you know, where we could relax a little bit in the laundry. That, let me turn that off, sorry about that. And that relieved a lot of the, that relieved the, I could see it relieved stress on her on that one. Yeah, yeah. being able to sit in a jacuzzi and take a shower and all that kind of stuff, so that was great. And um, Val said we can use their, their, lo their washing machine. But then it started doing something that didn't work, you know, and, and John had to take it apart and come to find out some stuff that was from the kids, their kids' uh, clothing got stuck in there and he had to fix it and stuff like that. So Val just said, I'll just leave your laundry, I'll take care of it, that kind of thing. And, of course, we paid them for what that's worth. But when, when, uh, when they called, they said, well, we're on our way. Do we need to bring anything? And I said, she's going to definitely need some gloves and uh, I says I bought a bunch of masks and they're like well we need the masks for and I says you'll find out <laughs> you know, but when I came over you know obviously you got three days of that water being in the basement even though we got some of it out it's still there and um, so when they got the masks what I did is I turned it around and I poured uh, baking soda on the outside of the mask so that it kind of filter through and then I had them put them on I'm like oh thank you <laughs> you know so and their son was like oh I don't want to go in there because it smells bad and it's like yeah. this is life you know you just got to deal with it you know just their youngest grow a pair and get busy you know yeah. and uh but it you know John's a good organizer too you know he's just like okay this is what your job this is your job this is your job and you know kind of a chain reaction type of thing and uh Michael, of course, was, you know, the bigger, heavier stuff was Michael's job. And uh, I, I, I couldn't tell Gabby and Michael enough how much I appreciated, you know, and they're both sick. They're both so sick, it's not even funny, you know. And um, I think a lot of it's because eating habits and stuff like that, immune system's down. But they, we were all, well, the three of us, he was in the, in the house fighting the water issue in the house while we were outside fighting the water issue and we're all soaking wet with shovels and buckets and everything and um, Friday it was in the house it was like I would fill a bucket and Michael would take it outside and then you know that kind of thing you know it was anything that was heavy I said okay here's a bag of stuff and he'd take it outside you know so his his job was mostly up and down the stairway while I was doing everything downstairs and and when, we, when I realized we were losing the battle with the water, it was like, okay, it's called bailout. You know, let's just grab what we can. And so I was like, you know, I told Gabby and Steve, Michael had ran. I guess he took off to go see if he could buy a cell phone or something. Could Drove all over town, couldn't get one. And um, so Gabby and Steve, what their jobs were was to be in the stairway. I was already soaking wet. You know, I just said, just stay there, I'll bring stuff to you. And I was just grabbing armloads of stuff and giving it to them. I said, just take it upstairs, just take it upstairs, just take it upstairs, you know. And I, I went into the bathroom and threw everything in bags and took it, take it upstairs. And for some reason, I found sewing in the bathroom this, yesterday. I couldn't figure out how that happened. <laughs> it was just one of those things. Just grab as much as I can, especially the important things, right. you know. And when I realized the water was hitting the, the filing cabinets, I went in there and grabbed a few files and... I went into his office and grabbed all the files from the filing cabinet because we don't know how deep that's going to be, you know. And so I, you know, and disconnect all the, everything electrical, you know, and it was just one of those things, right. you know. And hope and pray, and mm -hmm. that's all you could do. That's so. all you can do. Yeah, so they've been, you know, I think 
our whole family has been doing really well in the sense of working together. You know, it's like, okay, here's your job, this is your job, this is your job, and we just did it, you know. Well, here's the thing. You're, you're in cleanup mode, right. right? And once cleanup mode is over, then you're into restoration mode. To get yeah. to restoration mode, you need to really, again, I go back to what I was talking about. We're looking for resources, right? right. So over the next week, I want you to, I want you to begin that process, mm -hmm. okay? And then the second thing I want you to do is work on one thing mm -hmm. that you can bring back to yourself in regards to, okay, now that I've done these, now these are the one, this is one thing I want to do every single day that's going to help me bring back some normalcy to help continue my progress, mm -hmm. right? That's all that I want you to do this week. Is something as small and as simple as that seems, that will have a tremendous motivational effect mm -hmm. and psychological effect that you do have some sense of independent control, mm -hmm. right? That's all that I really want you to work on, okay? okay. Again, as, as minute that as it seems, mm -hmm. and as simple as it seems, those are very important elements that I want you to do this week, okay? okay? Can you do that for me? Oh, yeah. I've all been right. trying. Yeah, sure. It's like, uh, but I think, that, yeah, trying mm -hmm. is good, but I think I want you to focus on one thing. This is one thing I'm going to do today that I know that's going to help me, right? At the same time, too, now we're getting cleaned up, I want to get this done so it helps relieve that stress of anxiety of, okay, what's going to happen next, right? So I want you to really work that process. Mm -hmm. that. Got him on the drawer thing for his underwear. <laughs> he lost his, his, his uh, well, yeah, our, our bedroom furniture is gone, but mm -hmm. he doesn't have a place to put his things. I have my office, so I was able to... My office now has all my sewing stuff and my bedroom stuff. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I thank, thankfully, I had bought all these supplies to make presents for my kids, you know, for Christmas. And they were all in the basement, you know. And so I was able to grab all that out. And some of it got wet, you know, in the first stages you know, type of thing, but at least I know, you know, if I, if I have to replace it, I know what it is that I need to replace, you know, because I got the samples there. So, that's upstairs, all my, you know, the, the important sewing projects that I need to get done are in my office, so that's a pile on my desk. I was hoping to focus on that and get my, I haven't even touched the computer, uh, other than the, this is what happened on Facebook, and this is what happened on my, my fitness pal, I haven't even, I saw that you were on there and you've been logging the last few days. So again, I'm not. I yeah. like to see how active you were. So again, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> it's like I can't log all my food, yeah. but this is what happened. Right. Exactly. That's okay. That's all right. Yeah, because it's it's. I've had days where it's after midnight before I can sit down at a yeah. computer. You know, and then we like I said, it was a couple of days we didn't even. Well, have don't even focus on logging right now. I just want you to focus on controlling what you can control. Yeah. Right. Well have shakes and you can always do those kind of things, very simple things that you can do. We can get back to logging once things some normalcy comes back down. Right. So I think that's that's I, I don't want you to do too much to try to focus on I've got to lose this weight, I gotta lose <laughs> this weight. I want you to focus on things that you can maintain control of that's gonna help your progress. Right. That's the most important thing. Right. That's what I need to Yeah. And I need to pay you. <laughs> I know. I know. I feel bad. Don't you feel guilty I for this? Do. <laughs> I do. I do. I feel bad. Um, well, for those things, give me some supplies while we're at it. Yeah, I will. What would you like? Um, I can give you some bars. I can give you some, some drinks. What would you like? Uh, the, the shakes. How about, like, vanilla and chocolate? Yeah, okay. Let me look at this. And those. bars. Anything but banana. Okay. <laughs>